the house and the studio are connected. There's a whole reason for that. I initially, when I bought it, I wanted to make it a separate building, but the bank didn't like that. Yeah. And so according to the bank, uh, so when I, when we say I built it, actually, I actually was the contractor. I built it. Oh, yeah. So I, like, I didn't hire somebody to build this. Yeah. But the bank was like, uh, they didn't want it to be under a separate roof. So according to everybody, this is a media room and a yes. bedroom. It's like a mother-in-law's suite, right? Yes. Right? But if for resale, I can do that. But for yeah. my purposes, it's a studio. So got the lobby, got a kitchenette, <clears throat> got the... The main, the tracking rooms here, the control rooms down there. Um, I have a kind of like a little B room office thing there, um, which is nothing to speak of yes. really. But so the whole thing all said and done is right at a thousand square feet. Since I built it, um, I kind of, I kind of got to specify everything. Like as far as like, you know, all the wiring and everything, like there's over five miles of wire. And like it, which that's crazy, right? I just started adding up the linear feet. Yeah. Of like between, you know, everything from, you know, speaker wire, you know, all the way down to the cat five and yeah. monitoring the whole bit, like, you know, balanced, unbalanced. And I was like, dang, and I started doing the math. I was like, there's five miles of wire. And, Cause, and this isn't even a big studio. I'm like, how many, yeah. how much wire is in a big studio? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I had a big order from Redco. When... I'm sure they're very happy. <laughs> well, for them, it was a small order, I'm sure. Oh. Okay, so we'll just start in here. Uh, uh, so this is this is the tracking room. This is unbelievable, dude. Um, thanks. <laughs> so I, you know, it's not big, but man, it, it actually does. When you track in here, the room mics, they, it sounds great. It sounds really good. It's kind of one of those deals where I got a price from an acoustician to actually design the studio, uh -huh. and the price he gave me was just, and he wasn't even, he wasn't like a Russ Burger guy. He was just like a some guy yeah right he built a couple studios the price he gave me to design the studio was like i mean it might have been more than the house i mean it yeah. was crazy yeah i was like well i guess i'm learning how to design a studio yeah <laughs> so i i don't like i've been in audio for you know probably 25 years as a musician but i didn't i didn't have a lot of experience with acoustics um sound isolation all that stuff so i had to kind of give myself a crash course when we designed the house. Yeah. Um, and so this whole thing was really a giant experiment because I didn't know if it was going to work or not. So there was a lot of reading, um, lots of research. And plus I, you know, I, I had a budget. So of course the whole thing is, it's like, okay, this is a home studio. I couldn't go crazy with it. It's not like, I, I mean, I didn't float the slabs or whatever. Yeah. You know, I have a floating floor, but it's just because the floor is floating, not because I have every room on an individual slab and sure. all of that stuff. So I was like, okay, how, what's the best I can build this reasonably as a home studio? Is that a closet back there? That's like the gear closet and like the mic lockers in there, cables, all of that stuff. When I track, we end up just go blowing it off so we don't get reflections. Slapping. Sure. I think the one big mistake I made or didn't even take into account when I built this place was storage. Yeah. Um, just honestly, you just, I didn't think about it. Um, so this is, was, always, it's designed and functions as an ISO booth. Yeah. But really I have three drum kits in there and pedal boards and all the other gear. Yeah. This is not the main kit, but this is uh, this is a 63 Slingerland. And so what's awesome about it is, well, multiple things. Um, you know, a lot of vintage kits, like when you mic them up, you can, depending on how you tune it and how you EQ it and compress and all that, you can make them sound modern, right? Yeah. You cannot get this kit to sound modern. Oh. Like like if you, want, <laughs> if you want a modern sounding kit, you gotta choose something else. This one is flat out always gonna be a vintage sounding kit. It is yeah. just fat and wooly all the time. Yeah. And uh, man, I found this guy sitting in the corner of Guitar Center. Wow. Only, only good, only good deal I've ever got at Guitar Center <laughs> ever. It was ratted out. It had sat in somebody's attic for wow. years. Did not have this wrap on it. Um, it looked like it was falling apart. And I went and looked at the stamps on the shelves. Examined the shelves. They weren't cracked. They were or nothing. It was yeah. like I was like the only thing that was bad was the wrap. Yeah. And I got it for three hundred fifty bucks. Whoa! Yeah, and I took it over to John Zug at Dallas Drum. He like redid the bearing edges, rewrapped it. Like when I like when I first saw it, I was like, "This is glorious!" And and then we mic'd it up, and I was like, "Oh wow!" A lot of times, I won't even put any dampening in the kick. We just use the the dampening strip here, and that's yeah, it. just leave it open. So my intern keeps his kits here. So he's got he's got a '60s um, Ludwig in there. Yeah. yeah, and then there's that, a full Acrolyte kit in there. <sighs> 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but, and this room sounds really good with drums for the size of it. You know, it sounded a little boxy when I first built it, but then what ended up happening was I ended up building these diffusers and I built these after the fact because I wanted to see how the room sounded before yep. with it raw, right? Yep. And so I just kind of added wall, wall treatments and ceiling treatments as needed um, to kind of get it to sound the way we wanted it to. And so by the time we were done, like the decay in the room is really natural. Yeah. Like, I mean, really like it, the, it sounds like it's two or three times the size it, it really is because the decay is so natural. It doesn't have this giant, like it, that's like it's in a box. Yeah. For as small a room as it is. I love the way the drums sound in here. You can honestly just put room mics up um, and that could be your verb. Like it's really nice. Yeah. So you've got some diffusers on the front, the back, and the, cl the cloud is a diffuser. And cloud then... is a diffu that was the one biggest thing that I did that changed the entire room was that cloud. Yeah. I, That's I a didn't, nice I, one, dude. I didn't realize how much it was going to change the the room. Um, Looks amazing too. Well, it almost killed us getting us up, getting up there. I can't imagine. Once we got it up, man, it just changed the room completely. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it was it was a little bit boxy, you know. Yeah. And then we threw that up, and it was just like, whew, just yeah. evened, evened out the frequencies. The walls here, there, these are panels as well. When I built the studio, I actually designed these panels and had them, I had a bud, I've got a buddy, Brad Jackson over at Jackson Ampworks. He's got a CNC machine. I did, I designed these panels um, and I thought, oh, no big deal. There's, I think there was like 15 or 16 of them. And I was like, oh, they're gonna all be the same. And then I started laying it all out and measuring. I was like, oh, I got a light in that panel. Oh, I've got an electrical outlet in that panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a wall, a wall plate on that panel. Oh, I've got a, you know, a light switch in that panel. All of them are different. Yeah. Every panel was different. Um, they had the same basic design, but every one of them was different. But the cool, so I basically have like rock wool back here. Yep. And then this is just cloth and it allows the, the, um, the sound to go through. What we ended up doing was um, we ended up doing a double layer at the bottom and then a single layer at the top. And so we we're getting more more uh bass frequencies uh, yeah. down here and then this up here is acting a little bit more like diffusion just a little bit yeah well and you know it's kind of one of those things where you know i didn't hire guys to do like these like the panels and like finish it out and stuff like yeah you know it was me and my dad in here that's great scanning them and installing them and that's you know awesome. it was definitely a labor of love but it, it turned out good